Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Kendall from the Recording Lounge Podcast, and on today's video, we're talking about how saturation devices are affected by the EQ and tonality of the input source. So as we discussed in the Harmonic Saturation 101 video, saturation devices do what they do by adding harmonic content above the fundamental tones that come into the device. If you add enough harmonic content, it will saturate, and to our ear, it will sound something like distortion. But what if the harmonic content being added is exciting a frequency region that we don't really want to excite? For example, let's say you're taking something like this kick drum. And you want to add a little bit of saturation to get a little bit more sizzle, a little bit more click and crunch on the top end. So you run through a saturation plugin, something like the UAD Neve 1073. And you get something like this. Not exactly what you're looking for, right? It sounds really muddy. Now, of course, you could just be saturating a little bit too much, but really the truth is a little bit more complicated. What you're essentially hearing here is that the saturation device is being flooded with sub-low frequencies, which in turn will add harmonic content at predictable intervals above that fundamental. Now, our kick drum is sitting somewhere around 50 hertz, so we're going to get harmonics at 100 hertz and 150 hertz and 200 hertz and 250 hertz, right? And so because our kick drum has so much sub, we're going to get this flood of low mids that we don't really want. So what are we to do? I mean, there are many cases where we're not looking to get any more low mids. We want our low mids and lows to stay pretty well defined, but we want to get the benefits of saturation in our mid range and high frequencies. Well, one solution is you could use a multiband saturation plugin, something like FabFilter Saturn, and this is a great plugin. It allows you to split the frequency region into different bands and keep the lows clean and saturate the high frequencies. Check it out. It's pretty cool. However, most saturation devices, many of our analog devices and, you know, analog tape, tubes, most things with these types of technologies are not multiband. So what are we supposed to do? Well, today, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to give you some examples of how saturation devices respond to various input sources, EQ different ways. Now, this is incredibly important to consider when you're saturating sounds because where you saturate in the chain and what the source sounds like at that exact moment will have a profound impact on your results. So first things first, I'm going to play you the raw drums that we have to work with in this example. Well, they're not exactly raw. It's a stereo drum mix of some drums I recorded here at my studio. And they sound pretty good. I'm happy with how they sound. And I want to get a little bit more aggressiveness, a little bit more crunch, a little bit more sizzle out of them. So I run into a saturation plugin. Again, let's use our UAD Neve 1073. And you can pretty quickly hear what I'm starting to experience. As I drive it more, I just get more and more flub in the low frequencies, right? That's not exactly what I want. I want it to mostly be affecting the mids and the highs, but I really want to use this Neve 1073 type sound. Well, part of this goes back to how a lot of types of analog devices process harmonic content, specifically how tape machines tend to saturate. Tape machines tend to saturate more as the frequency increases, and so the higher frequencies saturate a bit more than the lower frequencies. Now, of course, if you push it hard enough, everything's going to saturate, but the high frequencies will get crispy before the low frequencies get flubby. And a lot of saturation devices, say mic preamps and compressors, they don't always work that way. So how can we simulate this? Well, we can run into an EQ curve, something like this, where we are cutting our low frequencies and boosting our high frequencies, 
and then we can run into our saturation device. And then after the saturation device, we can invert the EQ curve and go the opposite direction. This is what would be called a de-emphasis filter. Um, and a lot of pieces do this in the analog domain. They essentially will force frequencies to push into the device a certain way and then make up for it in some way on the output. So check out what happens when we do that, when we run through this type of filter setup. So in this example, our low end stays clean and we get that extra, you know, crunchiness that we were hoping to get. When compared to just the regular saturation, check it out. You see how much punchier and clearer our low end is when going through the exact same saturation device with the exact same settings? Now, what about the opposite? What if we de-emphasize the highs and boost the lows and then run into our saturation device and then do the opposite on the way out? Well, we're going to get a lot more of the thing we don't want. So as you can see, we're flooding that processor with more low frequencies and it's getting flubby and muddy and it's saturating exactly in the way that we don't want it to, okay? Now I've also done this just for good measure. I've got examples of pushing mid-range, then saturating, then cutting mid-range. Check that out. You can hear how crunchy the snare drum gets on this. And then we also did the opposite where we're cutting mid-range, then saturating, and then boosting it back afterward. So, essentially, the moral of the story here is that whatever frequency range is most prominent in your source sound, that region and the octaves above it are the frequency regions that are going to be most affected by that saturation device. So, if your source sound is really fat, something like this, where we're boosting lows and cutting highs, it's going to saturate heavily in the low frequencies and you're going to get that sort of overblown low end. Now, to be fair, that might be exactly what you want in certain instances, but if you wanted your low end to stay cleaner and you wanted your high frequencies to be more affected by the saturation, then you might want to go with something like this, where you're cutting lows, you're saturating, and then you're reversing that sort of filter. In this case, this is what I was looking for. Keep in mind, there are many plugins and analog devices that are aware of this phenomenon and compensate for it. For example, Loop Trotter makes a device called the Saturate 2. This is a hardware saturation device that has a low safe and high smooth option, which add a low cut and high boost pre-emphasis filters, just like in our drum examples. So this prevents the saturation from getting too tubby and muddy in the low frequencies and the low mids, and focuses more of the saturation towards the high frequencies. So keep this stuff in mind next time you plan on adding saturation to a sound. What does your source sound sound like? If it's the raw input coming off of a mic, do you plan on filtering out some low-end rumble before you saturate? Do you plan on adding mids or highs to your sound? 
Do you plan on adding or removing low end? How close did you mic the source? Is there a lot of proximity effect and low frequency buildup that you plan on taking out later? Should you instead be miking it farther away so you don't get as much low frequency buildup? All of those decisions can affect the results of the saturation that follows. For example, if you record a vocal or an acoustic instrument with a very full frequency microphone that doesn't have a built-in high pass filter, and you try to saturate at the mic pre, you might actually be underwhelmed with the results because the mic pre is trying to saturate this very wide bandwidth sound that's not a realistic representation of what it's going to be, which is yet another reason why one of my mottos is the source is king. And you're always trying to get the source sound and the microphone choice and the mic placement as close as possible to what you want it to be because everything down the line is going to be affected by that sound. Not just saturation, but really any effect. Compression, reverb, delay, anything. Now again, if you're not getting the results that you want from your saturation device, you can try some of these experiments with EQing into the saturator and then de-emphasizing it afterwards or vice versa to get more of the result that you're looking for. Again, I'm not saying any of these is wrong or right, but I am saying it will have an effect. So hopefully this video is interesting. If you have any questions, comments, send me an email, recordingloungepodcast at gmail.com. Make sure to check out the Recording Lounge Podcast on your favorite podcast player app or website, and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Thanks for watching this video. I'll talk to you next time.